Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Here it is once again that God has allowed us to hear what thus said the Lord. Amen. And we just continue to thank him as we uh, go through the start the early stages of uh, this new year. Amen. And we continue to thank God that he has brought us thus far. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, gracious God, Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for our health and strength in these old bodies. And Father, we continue to pray that you would uh, continue to uh, 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 pave our way, O oh God, mm -hmm. as we continue to study your word and re read your word and, and develop that faith, O oh God, that we know that no man can take away. Right. Father, we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Chapter 12, we're on Exodus chapter 12, and we're continuing to talk about uh, Pharaoh mm -hmm. and letting God's people go, right. the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. And we know that he uh, called up on Moses mm -hmm. to go to Pharaoh, Moses accompanied with Aaron, right. to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let his people go right. Right. so that they can serve me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see up until thus far, uh, if you read uh, the chapters in between, uh, we know that uh, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Mm -hmm. And it's not that God say, said, okay, I'm going to uh, harden Pharaoh's heart. I'm a, I know he, I'm just going to uh, not allow him to uh, humble himself before me. That's not the case. God just prepared the situation for Pharaoh to reject him. Yes. And... Uh, and all through this, if you read up until chapter 12, wh where, where we'll, we'll start, all, on th all up until this point, mm -hmm. he gave Pharaoh a chance to repent or, or humble himself before him. Yeah. And sometimes uh, 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 God's judgment mm -hmm. is still uh, 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 mercy. Mm -hmm. God's judgment is still grace mm -hmm. because he could have took Pharaoh out a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. But he gave him a chance, and Pharaoh still rejected him. So now we, we see up until this point that he bought up on the uh, 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 plagues and all of this stuff. And Pharaoh reneged on a few, saying that he was going to do it. You can go serve your God. But still, he re reneged. He rejected him. And then he, God bought on some more mm -hmm. plagues. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Pharaoh had his magicians yeah. that uh, 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 tried to imitate God. Amen. And you know, that's, that's how Satan does. Mm -hmm. He tries to imitate everything that God does. Yeah. Because the Bible said that he can appear as an angel of light. Amen. So he brought on these magicians and they tried to do everything that God tried to do through Moses. Yeah. But they couldn't do everything. Because God had to show them that I am God. So now here we are. We on chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Can you bring the mic up some for me? Chapter 12. We're talking about the Passover. Mm -hmm. So now God has gotten to this point. Pharaoh rejected him. Rejected him. Won't let his people go mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Meaning to uh, uh, sacrifice uh, uh, you know, back in the, the you know uh, uh, the law, sacrifice uh, the animals unto God. Uh, to uh, was a it was a uh, type of what Christ would do. Mm -hmm. So now Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh a chance. God gave Pharaoh a chance, and now he's to the point where he's saying, "Okay, Pharaoh, I'm going to take out mm -hmm. the firstborn." God is saying, in a sense, I gave you all of these warnings, mm -hmm. but you still wouldn't humble yourself. So now God gets to the point where his people has, have to leave Israel. He has to let them go. So now God is to the point where it's saying, okay, Pharaoh, I'm going to take your firstborn. Because what the Egyptians believe, mm -hmm. they believe that, uh, uh, their, the, that the firstborn, that their eternity right. would continue through the firstborn. 
So that meant something to him. So if God would take the firstborn, oh, he, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's a fatal blow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's to this point that he would take the firstborn. And not only of Pharaoh, not only of a uh, 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 Pharaoh, but a Pharaoh's servants yeah. of everything that pertained yeah. to Egypt that had a firstborn, Amen. God killed. So here we are, we're on chapter 12 talking about the Passover. Mm -hmm. Chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Now, now, when we go through this, this chapter, I, wanted, I want you to look for Christ. All right. I want you to look for Christ because this is what this is talking about. And sometimes when we read the Old Testament, we don't understand it because we don't look for Christ. Mm -hmm. And particularly I'm talking about us Christians. We don't understand. If we look for Christ, everything will come together. And, and, and these stories, these things that God uh, uh, had Moses uh, to do, they're not just typical things to be doing. It, it pointed to Christ. So let's look for Christ through all of this. Amen? Uh, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the, con all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for an house. So they was to take a lamb that represented the whole house. And it's funny that how we'll, we'll see as we, we continue to read. Now, although that one lamb represented that household, everybody still had to partake of that lamb. And that's how salvation is. Oh, father could be saved. Mother could be saved. And you know, the children ain't saved yet. Or the, or the, or the uh, 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 husband could be saved and the wife not. Yeah. The wife could be saved and the husband not. And God still sees the whole house, come on somebody, as a, 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 a holy house but everybody in order to get to heaven everybody in that house has to partake oh come on somebody y'all don't hear me has to accept Christ as Lord and Savior oh boy to do do y'all see Christ in this so he tells them uh, in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a an house and if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make uh, your count for the lamb. All right. There it is. Every person has to partake of it. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 5. And uh, uh, your lamb shall be without blemish. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Do that sound familiar? Amen. Christ was a sacrificial lamb for us. He was without blemish. He was perfect. So they had to take a lamb that didn't, uh, uh, that was without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Now it says from the sheep uh, or from a goat because during that time back then, sheep looked, uh, goats looked just like sheep because they had this long mane and they resembled, you know, a sheep. So he said, take a sheep or from the goats. Verse 6, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now let's go back up to 6. He said, uh, from the 10th day, from the 10th to the 14th. Now between that time, them four days, they had to inspect this animal. Them four days allowed them to inspect this animal to make sure there was no traces yep. of no kind of uh, 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 blemish or no kind of illness, that nothing was broken, nothing was wrong with him. That's what those four days was for. And after those four days was over, in the evening, they would kill it. And if we go back and we remember when Christ went to the cross, in the evening, around three, three something in the evening, in the evening, that's when he gave up the ghost. Oh, do y'all see Christ here today? And, and it goes on to say in uh, verse 7, and they shall take up the blood 
and strike it on the side posts and on the upper posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. So now they, 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 they're preparing for something. Mm -hmm. They took the blood mm -hmm. and they sprinkled it on the side of the, uh, of the side posts mm -hmm. and the upper door posts of their houses. Mm -hmm. And if we study that and look at that real good, that they represented a cross when they put this blood on the doorpost and on the upper uh, doorpost, the side post and the upper doorpost. Amen? Amen. Verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in that night. Mm -hmm. Oh, they shall eat the flesh in that night. Mm -hmm. See, we, when we accept Christ, mm -hmm. we can't eat some of him, mm -hmm. meaning we can't take part of him. We have to take the whole thing. We have to take him, take all of him. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we can't say I'm going to take some of it because I really ain't ready to take all of it. Or I still want to do some of the stuff I used to do. When you accept Christ, you have to take him, take it all for what he is. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Amen. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire. Meaning, roasted with fire, meaning uh, that symbolizes the judgment of God. Amen. Amen. And unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Mm -hmm. Now this unleavened bread uh, 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 typified the perfection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, w and, and when you s anytime you see the word unleavened in scripture, mm -hmm. it doesn't have, it's, 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 it's talking about perfection. And anytime you see the word leaven, that means some sin mm -hmm. is somewhere. Now, 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 let, let me let me put it the way you can All understand right. it. Uh, when you uh, making biscuits, yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if you just get plain flour, yeah. Amen. come on, somebody, yeah. you have to get some baking powder to mix with it so the dough can rise. Amen. And uh, that baking powder has some yeast in it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so. Uh, uh, now, uh, in the word of God, the, you know, we have, we see yeast and we put something in something that's yeah. supposed to be pure. Now we have just destroyed the whole yeah. thing. Amen. So he says here, unleavened, don't put, it's, it's, it's supposed to be pure. Don't, don't mix it with, no, don't put nothing in it. Unleavened bread. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And with bitter herbs shall you eat it. Now, why would God say with bitter herbs? You should eat, eat this unleavened bread. Why? Because to remind Israel yeah. that, man, you bought us out of Egypt, God. You bought us out of Egypt. And that's why uh, 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 when uh, uh, we see the cross, mm -hmm. it reminds us Amen. that Christ shed his precious blood Amen. for our Amen. sins, that we might have a right at eternal life. Mm -hmm. To remind us, every time we see a cross, it should... It should click, remind us, that yeah. thank you, God, yeah. Yeah. for sending your only begotten Amen. son to save a wretch like me. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw or sodden at all, at all with water, but roast with fire. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. See, see, you, 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 you can't eat it raw. And like I said, with no sodden at all with water, you can't, you can't uh, uh, put it in nothing. You can't mix it with nothing. Amen. Mm -hmm. His head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what this is saying. When they uh, presented this uh, sac sacrificial lamb before God, mm -hmm. ha it, it, didn't have to, it was not to have a blemish. Right, right. They was to eat it with un unleavened bread, mm -hmm. with bitter herbs. Mm -hmm. Don't eat it raw. And you know what sometimes some people eat. And the word says uh, we don't supposed to consume or blood, eat anything with blood in it. Right, right, right. And some folk just eat meat now, just two minutes on one side and Amen. two minutes on the other side, and they eat it. Yeah. Amen. And blood is still running out of it. Yeah. The Bible says that blood is life. Yeah. Amen. But they still want it, and they, and they think that's the, and that's the norm of the world. And, and if you go to these uh, rest restaurants now, if you don't tell them you want it well done, they're going to give it to you raw. Amen. 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 So, so they had to have this uh, 
sheep of this goat without blemish, eat it with uh, uh, bitter herbs, with unleavened bread, not, don't eat it raw, and they had to, uh, with his head and his leg, with the pertinence there, the pertinence is the intestine, <laughs> that they would take out, clean, and put back in the animal and eat it all as one. And like, like I said before, when you partake of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't partake some of it. You have to partake all of it. Amen? Verse 10, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Eat all of it right then. So he, he, here's, here's what this, this is saying. We can't say we accept God today. And tomorrow we, we don't. Every, we're supposed to take him all of it there and, 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 and leave nothing. Make sure we have everything that pertains to him. That we can live the life that he called us to live. Amen. And that which was, and that, see of verse 10, and that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. We can't receive Christ in stages. We, 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 we can't receive him in stages, amen? Verse 11, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Now, this, this is a, 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 a person that's ready to go somewhere, ready to leave. So th this is what God was telling the people of Israel. Eat the Passover ready to leave Egypt because you're going to leave. So he, he's saying here, ready to leave with shoes on your feet or staff in your hand and gird your loins, amen, and you shall eat it in haste. Eat it in haste, meaning they shall eat it, you know, kind of quickly because we, 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 I'm, I'm a, God is saying, I'm going to move you from this place because you're going to go and come and worship me, amen. And that, that's what we have to do in these times today. We have to serve God and wait. Serve God and wait on that glorious coming. Amen. It is the Lord's Passover. Still verse, uh, still verse 11. It is the Lord's Passover. What he did on the cross for us. The Lord's Passover. It didn't say man's Passover. It said the Lord's Passover. Amen. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. See, that's why God brought all of those judgments on Pharaoh. Why? Because God brought everything against Pharaoh, against what the Egyptians believed in. They believed in all of these gods, and, 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 and they worship animals. And that's why God killed all the first ones of the beasts, because they worship animals. So God went against everything of their living life that they believed in. He destroyed it. Amen. To show them that I am God. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. A symbol of the one to come. It shall be a token. I, if, if I put faith in this, putting this blood on this, on my doorpost, I believe it that in what Christ would come and do. And this is what this is, is saying. And continuing at 13, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Ain't that good? God didn't say, when I see your works, I will pass over you. When I see uh, uh, how long you've been worshiping me, I will pass over you. That ain't what he said. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Same thing when we accept Christ. God has to see the blood. And if we're under the blood, we're safe. Am I right? If we're under the blood, we're safe. So I just want to encourage you about stuff that's going on in the world. If you're under the blood, you're safe. Amen. I don't care what they try to bring against you. If you're under the blood, you are safe. Because the word said in here that God has to see the blood and he'll pass over you. Some folks so losing sleep because they're scared they're going to get the virus. 
Are you under the blood? That's what you need to ask yourself. Are you under the blood? Surely, God said if he did it for Israel, won't he do it for, for you? Oh, boy, y'all, whoo. Whoo, the blood, the blood. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, if we go back to all of those plagues that God brought up on Egypt, everything that happened, the place, uh, uh, Goshen, the place where the people of Israel was, none of the plagues came upon that place. Why was that? Didn't even touch Israel. So what, what, what I'm trying to tell you today is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If God did it, all the plagues that came did not touch Israel. The place where they were. Because they was under the blood. Oh, boy. That ought to ignite somebody today, boy. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. One of the two ordinances. The Lord's Supper and baptism. Amen. And, 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 and the, this uh, uh, Passover, of course, we don't have to get an animal today and go and get the blood and put on our doorposts and uh, to sacrifice and all that. No, the uh, Lord's Supper is a continuation of the Passover, which he said, keep it. Tell your generations, throughout your generations, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen? And, of course, we could find a... Uh, Lord's Supper, we do it every, every first Sunday, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 uh, chapter, and 1 uh, Corinthians uh, uh, the 5th chapter, that we can find that. Amen? Verse 15, seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Seven, the number seven, number of perfection. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Remember, unleavened bread is without yeast. Amen. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your house. And now he's talking about yeast bread. Put it out of your house. For whosoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And anytime we see leaven in scripture, like I said before, it talks about it's talking about sin. Verse 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. Signifying that it's not a works that we do. Amen. But the work is rec recognized through what Christ did on the cross. Verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. He mentions it again. Do this forever. Amen. Verse 18. In the first month of the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at, at evening. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. For whosoever eats that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leaven. Don't that sound familiar for us? We shall eat nothing leaven. Meaning, meaning we shouldn't partake in nothing that's sinful. Amen. In all your habitation shall you eat unleavened bread. In all your living, you shall eat unleavened bread. Meaning, eat that, those things that are of God. Verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take your lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. 
and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel on the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. So they was to put the blood on the doorpost and don't go outside. Because it's saying if you go outside, now you know you are no longer under the blood. Amen. So they must have put it on the post and stay inside until the death angel came and passed by. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. And would not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Mm -hmm. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance. There it is again. Mm -hmm. To you and to your sons forever. That meaning if we are a man or, or woman of God, mm -hmm. we should tell our kids about Christ. Amen. That's all this is saying. We, we, we should tell them about Christ. There is no way. I mean, it's just something that can't. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit won't let you. If you're a woman, a man of God, and, and your children, you have to tell them about Christ. Amen. You, you have to. I mean, there, there's no way around it. Amen? Amen? Verse 24, and you shall observe this thing for an owner to you and to your sons forever. 25, and it shall come to pass when you be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he has promised that you shall keep this service. Mm -hmm. There it is, keep it. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean you by this service? Mm -hmm. Children ask questions. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to tell them why this happened. Why, why, why do we partake in the Lord's Supper? Mm -hmm. Me and my wife, when I was studying this the other night, me and my wife, when she came to bed, I... Uh, started discussing it with her. I said, okay, in the morning, I'm going to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. And after we discussed it, I explained to her what the, you know, the meaning of the Passover. And I asked her the next morning, and she, you know, it wasn't exact, but but she she knew what it was. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and that that's what we have to do, because the, so, so sometimes when I'm saying the Spirit leads me to do that, when she comes to bed, I share something with her, because she's an example of me. Amen. You know, and I have to tell her what I know. Amen? But we have to let our children know that, you know, if this question is asked, we should be able to tell them what's the meaning of this, this of the Lord's Passover. Yes. Amen? 26, uh, 27. That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. That's what, we, that's what we have to tell them. Mm -hmm. And then tell them how, it, how we observe it today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And the people bowed the head and worshiped. Mm -hmm. 28, and the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So now we see uh, that they put the blood on the doorpost, mm -hmm. preparing themselves for the death angel to come, that they he would pass over them. Amen. So now we're going into 29 where now the death angel is going to come. Verse 29, and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of the cattle. The firstborn of everybody yeah. in the land of Egypt. Yeah. Because God targeted at everything that they worship. They worship all of these uh, animals and these uh, uh, gods. And even Pharaoh thought he was a god. Amen. 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 So God sent the death angel to kill the firstborn of all of these. Because that would be a fatal blow to them. Uh, uh, like I said earlier. Because they believe, the Egyptians believe that the uh, uh, that eternity continued through the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Verse 30, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, 
he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, but there was not a house where there was not one dead. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that in this time now where somebody will think something going on Amen. or they'll ask a question like, man, what is going on? I, my oldest son is, he woke up dead and they go to the neighbor and everybody come outside and the neighbor says the same thing. And the thought will come like, how could this be? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Amen. So I could imagine that's what they thought. Yeah. But they had the warning yeah. way before, yeah. didn't they? Amen. God gave them a warning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people. This is Pharaoh talking. Mm -hmm. Both you and the children of Israel and go serve the Lord as you have said. See, at, at the beginning, yeah. he said, who is the Lord yeah. that I should, what? Obey his yeah. voice. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And now he's saying, uh, uh, Moses, yeah. get, get him out of here. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he done, he done, God done put, he done hit me with a fatal blow. He done yeah. killed my firstborn. Mm -hmm. Get your gold, Moses. Mm -hmm. 32, also take your flock and your herds as you have said and be gone and bless me also. Bless now you see. Now, how you figure now, you could have been a blessing for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure. That, that's what Moses told us. Yeah. You could have been a blessing for us to let us go. Yeah. But now you want me, you see, this one came up for you. Now you want me to bless you. Amen. 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 But, 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 you know, when people is ignorant like that, we, we sometimes we still have to bless them. We still have to bless them and let God, let, let, let God deal with us. Yeah. Amen. Because we don't want nothing up on us. Amen. Because the, the, the unsaved need, need, blessed, need to be blessed too. Amen. Amen. 33. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. So now they are beginning to see that this is God's hand that's upon Moses. And we better let them go because we all going to die. Amen. And I imagine that's what exactly what they thought. They saw the firstborn dead in every house had somebody dead. Oh, they thought, oh, we next. Amen. Amen. 34. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their netting troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. So remember he told them that eat, eat the Passover with haste, put on your uh, shoes and, and your staff in your hand and get ready. Amen. So th th this is what they're doing here. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed uh, of Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. They asked them for this. Now God is preparing blessing Israel with Pharaoh stuff. And I know he probably wouldn't have a problem giving it to him right now. <laughs> Take whatever you want. I don't care. Take whatever you want and get out and go. But, but that, that, that's, that's how God does, though. He'll take a person that, you know, that, 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 that's got somebody in bound and use their stuff. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. Use their stuff to bless them on their way out. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 uh, verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. They gave them gold, they gave them silver. Yep. So they could uh, uh, have stuff in abundance when they get to the land where God will call them. Amen. 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 Now we're going to go into the Exodus. Mm -hmm. and the Verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, mm -hmm. and 600,000 on foot who were men beside children. Now in all, that's, that's just, they're just talking about here the men of war. But in all, it was like three million something people that came out of the land of Egypt. That's a lot of people. Three million people, and we, we could kind of un, un, uh, understand at times how Moses got frustrated. How can you, can we imagine that? Trying to minister to three million people. And people ain't changed. People act the way then like they act now. Amen. So that can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. 
And, and we, we can kind of say to ourselves that the Lord had to be with Moses. Had to be with him. Amen. Thirty-eight. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds and even much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leaven, because they were were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now, if you do study on that, they didn't actually spend 430 years in Egypt. The 430 years actually started when uh, 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 God sent Abraham from the land of Ur. Amen. So that's why it totaled 430 years. And it came to pass, verse 41, and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is, 42, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. 43, and the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat of it. Uh-oh. There shall no stranger eat of it. What does that mean? If we partake in the Lord's Supper, which is the continuation of the Passover, questions is asked, does, can an unsaved person partake in it? Well, by this verse here, this is the owners of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat, uh, eat thereof. So if a person that's unsaved partake in the Passover, what are they, they're not really, I mean, they, they don't know the purpose. You're right. In the words it says, to let a man examine himself. That they, you know, that they are right with God. And, and you, you, you're not going to be labeled, if you're not saved, you're not going to be labeled, you know, some, some kind of way for not taking it. You just don't know the fullness of it. I, and it really does you no know, good to take it because you're not glorifying God anyway. You're not, you're not gl 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 glorifying God because you haven't accepted his only begotten son. You, you, you haven't accepted the sacrificial lamb, which was Christ. So there, there's really no, no, no need to do it because you, you, don't, you, you, you don't stand in the midst of what it means. Amen? So, so, so when we, when this is put before us, let, let, let us examine ourselves. Because surely some, some things can come upon you. When you misuse the ordinance, come on, somebody, of God. So examine yourself. And like I said, you're not going to be labeled for not doing it. And it, it, it's better if you're not. It's better if you don't take it. Amen? Verse 44. But every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. That's a symbol of accepting Christ. Accepting Christ. Because that was the covenant that God uh, uh, made with a a Abraham to circumcise. And that showed that, for one, there was a shedding of blood. And that showed that they had faith in the coming of Christ. What Christ would do on the cross. Amen. 45, a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. 46, in one house shall it be eaten. You shall not carry forth out of the flesh abroad, out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone thereof. When Christ went to the cross, wasn't no bones broken. 
and we shall not, uh, the house is Christ. We worship him in, in the house of God. Amen. It should not be taken out or brought out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone thereof. 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with you, and you will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. See, that says right there. It says it right there. Unless you accept Christ, then you're in a position to partake of it. But if you're not, now we, we if a stranger, and it says here, if a, when a stranger shall come in and they uh, uh, finally see that they need Christ as a Lord and Savior, when a stranger come in, we have to let them come in. We don't just throw them away because, you know, they, they you know, they're not, they haven't, uh, uh, yeah, they haven't been circ circumcised yet, which is they're saying in this, this uh, uh, passage of scripture here. The same way when, when we're preaching the gospel and somebody come to give their life to Christ, that's that stranger coming. Yeah. Yeah. And now they are allowed to partake in the Passover. Amen. And he shall be as one who is born in the land. Amen. First he called the, God called the people of Israel to go forth and be that example. And when the Israel didn't heed to what God said, he called on who? The Gentiles. And when they accepted Christ, they was now part of that, part of God's people. Amen. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Ooh, there it is again. No uncircumcised could not eat of the Passover. They had to come and be circumcised first. Mm -hmm. Which is us now, which is saying the same thing. Unless we know Christ and accept Christ, we are to partake in the Passover. Because it shows our faith that we have in him. 49, one law shall be to him who is homeborn, and unto the stranger who sojourns among you. Salvation is not two ways. Salvation is one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's what this is saying here, that one law shall be to him of the ones who accept him, and the strangers who come in and accept them. Verse 50. Thus did the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Now they, they just didn't come out of Egypt like a, like a herd of cattle. They came out organized. Amen. They came out organized, the Egyptians, by their armies. And we know, you know, if you've ever been in the army or if you've seen uh, the army on TV, there's, there's some kind of formation. They, there's, there's not a, they're not all over the place. So this is how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt by their armies. Amen. Amen. And that's the end of 12. I didn't thought God was going to get done. But, but that's, 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 that's the whole psalm of chapter 12. And we see that uh, there's a warning that God gives us when he's trying to move us to a certain place. And it's best for us to heed that warning. Because if he really wants you to do his will, and he will, then it's best to go ahead and humble ourselves to do what God has called us to do. And we see that Pharaoh was... God gave him a chance, but he still didn't humble himself before God. And God knew that he had to bring the children out of Israel so they could worship him. And he had to take Pharaoh down to the very point, rock bottom per se, to get him to let the children go. And I don't think if we, you know, so, sometimes when 
we shouldn't have to let, mm-hmm. it shouldn't have to get to that point for us. Yeah. When in the end, we're going to wind up doing what God wants us to do anyway. Mm-hmm. So when he uh, 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 sends certain warnings toward us, mm-hmm. let's look at it in a, mm-hmm. you know, let's look at the big picture and ask ourselves, God, is are you? This this might be from God. Let me humble myself. Let me go in prayer. Amen. And Pharaoh had to let his let the people go, and he had no power. He thought he did. He had no power that he thought he had. Amen. Because God is Almighty, and God is God, and He will continue to be God. Amen. So, what can we learn from this? Scripture. God will is his will. Mm-hmm. We can learn from this scripture, from this chapter, that uh, uh, no matter what come upon the world, we are under the blood. Mm-hmm. We are under the blood. And I just want to encourage you to stay under the blood. Mm-hmm. And if you're not under the blood, get under the blood. Because that's the only, only way that you will be saved by the hand of Almighty God. Amen. 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 I thank you Amen. for tuning in. I uh, think next week will be uh, chapter 13 that we are continuing to talk about the people of Israel after they came out of Egypt. Amen. Amen. That God had a blessing upon them and he blessed them with silver and gold to take into the promised land, the land that he promised. Amen. And they was, uh, uh, when they came out, they wasn't perfect. I mean, they, they, they still had some stuff because they sometimes forgot where they came from. And sometimes we forget. But God always remind us to never forget where we came from. Never forget that it was the Lord's Passover that we were so uh, 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 grateful of. And that we stand up under this day for covenant. That he will protect us from whatever that, that might come up on the world. Amen. Amen. I thank you. L- let, let us pray. Holy gracious God, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, O oh God. And Father, we, uh, uh, as we, long as we have breath in these bodies, we will continue the Passover through the Lord's Supper that you said uh, uh, do forever, O oh God. And we thank you, we thank you for sending Christ to be the sacrificial lamb that we can abide in, that we can have strength in, that we can have faith in until we uh, meet on the other side, oh God, and stand before you. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.